Yeah, beach. I would teach every Saturday. Yeah. And even just like Williamsburg myself. I would ride my bike. It was so easy. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe what they're across the street from each other. That's nuts. And then the second year, you know, the amount of that we were able to do. Hi, Mark. Right here. See? I know. Look what I got more. Mike, Joe Michaels just dropped it off. Yeah, there's probably more than Where did you get that? Joe Michaels just dropped it off right before the meeting. Oh, oh, you saw Joe. He just came in and dropped it off. Oh, I said, do you want to stay? He said, no. How is he doing? How is he working? Good. He scheduled it. 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 Uh, we're waiting for one more member, so we'll give it till five after seven. If she doesn't show with the start. Yep. Maybe we'll have to review the minutes. We have to go on that. May nineteenth. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Hour one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, way back. There's copies of this agenda. If anybody wants to see it. Oh. What we're doing. Well, yeah. whatever. Elizabeth Neasel. Hank Williams. Here. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. 
before except Elizabeth. Thanks for coming, guys. We haven't met in two months, so I haven't seen each other. Can you turn your mics on? Yeah. Sorry. We haven't, we haven't met in two months. We haven't seen each other in three months, so we're resuming business. Um, are there any amendments to the uh, to the minutes from May 17th? Any amendments from the board? May I have a motion that the minutes from May 17th be accepted as presented? Motion to accept the minutes. May I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to accept the minutes. So accepted. Thank you. Um, okay, two items on the agenda. Um, I think we'll deal with the going forward first because that seems to be really simple. Yes, sir. Can we speak in your microphones? We can't hear it. The better? Yes. You just face the microphone when you're speaking, please. Okay, thank you. Maybe that's better. Uh, okay, uh, the going forward. Yeah. Application. Sir, uh, please stand up and tell us what the application is and, and why you're here. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, at least we have a microphone from the house. No, no, no. Is it on? No, no. Is it on? All right. Uh, looking for a air, area variance, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, to put a uh, addition on a on a building, basically put a living room on it. Okay. Um, do we not need a site plan map, which we don't have? Well, I, I have some drawings. The, the person that's doing the concrete work had a funeral to go to, so he didn't get his uh, the foundation, uh, all, all the plans done for that, because uh, okay. he's away. Okay. Well, I had some rough sketches on what we're doing, what we want to do. Yeah. Proposing. Um, yeah, I'd like to see them. I yeah. think they should be submitted as part of the public records. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we need, we need a lot map. Is this a map of a lot? No, this is just the construction. That, that's just what we want to do. Okay. Well, I, I think I, I made a site visit today. So I think uh -huh. I understand what's going on. These other people might not because it may not be familiar with the property. But uh, this, this is the house behind the Glen Ford garage, or adjacent to it, actually. Yeah, it's on this side of it. OK, the one is not sided yet. It just has an installation yep. on the sides. Yep. OK, so uh, if you're on Route 28 and facing the house, is this addition on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side? It will be on the left. It will be on the, this side. The side adjacent to your neighbor where that row of trees is? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're in the process of starting to cut the trees down. We're going to take all the trees down just because they're you know, 100 footers and a little dangerous. Oh, you cut all those down? Yeah, we're going to get all the trees out. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, grind the stumps, get rid of all the roots before you know any of this can happen. But. Uh -huh. It didn't seem to me, I mean, this, usually these area variances are, are quite easy. It didn't seem to me there was that much room between the edge of the existing house and your the border of your property. Are those trees on your property? We got yeah, those are all on our property. Uh, -huh. uh I think it was like about 20, 22 feet, almost 23 feet, I think, from the side of the building to okay. the uh, property line. You're asking for a 14 foot extension, I think. At 12, well, 14. I'm not well. sure what you know. What's actually allowed? I think the setback is 60 feet. Isn't that what we looked up? <clears throat> 40. How would I get in here? 40. 40 feet? Okay, so then it would be 22, so 18 foot? 18 Parents. foot variance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You guys understand that? Mm hmm. Okay. It's 18 foot for the clothes. Right. So that would be projecting closer to a neighbor's property. That house on that side is the green house. Um, have you had any contact with your neighbor concerning that? Yeah, Ward Todd owns the building next to us. Okay. Um, the trees, I don't know if there's two or three trees out front that are on his land, which are coming down also. Okay. Uh, and we talked about doing a fence between it, which, okay. you know, he's, he's, he's fine with it. Okay. Um, Does he live in there? No, no. rents it. 
Okay. We bought it a few years ago. Okay. A few years ago. All right. Three at least. Well, absent of any uh, vociferous uh, disagreement amongst the neighbors, we usually grant these, these kind of variances. But uh, two things. Uh, one, I think we need a site plan or site map to approve. We can survey. We can yeah, survey. Just for that line, that side, we'll try to be together. Yeah. I, do, I do have a, okay. I, do, I didn't even realize it was immediate to my mm -hmm. Well, the other thing is, uh, before we can do anything, we need to hold a public hearing. And we need to right. publicize that public hearing if there are any disagreeing or, or supportive neighbors that want to speak and we need to hear from them and right. incorporate their testimony into our decision. Um, but absent of that, it seems like some of a no-brainer, but we do have to go through that legal step. Yeah, yeah how we explain that all of you. Okay. So I make a motion that we hold a public hearing at our next meeting uh, yeah. for the Gwen Ford. Application for the area areas. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you, um, I checked your exemption with county today, and you're, he's within 500 feet, but it says all residential stuff. Within 500 feet of a county road. Any road, county wants you to refer to, but yes, certainly okay. county. And then each was a town road? Yes. Okay. Cool. They, they exempted the private road that one time. Right. But his, his own business. It's commercial. Mm -hmm. So if, if your exemption from county is it lists residential, but you may just want to refer anyways to be safe, mm -hmm. just put it out there. Okay. So in other words, we refer to the county if there's any objection about uh, impeding right away on a county road or anything like that, and they, they win. So uh, yeah, so we have to put in that application. You have to make a motion. Oh. Do it. Oh. Uh, okay, so I make a motion that we apply to the county for a decision on feedback. Uh, feedback. Okay. Yeah. Because you can make your own decision. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we that one. Yeah. 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 It's a formality, actually. Right. Um, for uh, for the like, for the yeah, yeah. application, we have a second. So. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So we'll refer it to the county and set the public hearing for the next meeting. Okay. So uh, that notice will go out to all the adjacent landowners, mm -hmm. and it'll uh, appear in the public paper record, which is now the Kingston Freeman, right? Kingston Freeman, and okay. on our website. And anybody who wants to participate and come speak up, we will listen to them, and then we can make a uh, make a decision on on your various application at that time. Okay. okay. Thank you. See you next time. Anything else I can bring next time? Good. By then we'll have a site plan. Okay. A, a survey of 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 the site. The house the now, and, and, and this structure was built on an existing foundation, right? Yeah. Okay, so we could wrap on the end. But we have to do the <laughs> survey of the property before we can proceed. Can we go into the last, the last survey, survey that was done? If it's accurate, if there's not been any changes. Is, 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 there, is there a date limit? I mean, if it's done 10 years ago, it's still valid if there's no changes, right? Yeah, but the structure is yeah. Oh yeah, the, the um, I don't know when they surveyed it, probably about when Carl Larish bought the house down back, I think they had that survey and mm -hmm. if it's still accurate, we're, that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, you know, we don't want to force you to spend money on a surveyor if you don't have to. Right. But, okay. Yeah, so if we can take a look at that and have a visual reference so we can make sure everybody understands what's going on. Okay. Uh, and then beyond that, I don't see any reason we, we can't afford this variance. Uh, there's no impediment on, on right of way, no on public right of way, no impediment on your neighbor's property. Right. It enhances your own property, enhances, enhances your property value, enhances the value of the neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. So uh, we just need this formality of a public hearing. Mm -hmm. So if you can bear with us, we will uh, yeah, yeah. make a decision. Next month? Yep. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Just to add, now he's probably going to need that survey. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Glenn, I have to, put Howdy meets before they meet, and yep. they need it soon, so they'll want to see that survey too. And that has to be 10 days prior to our meeting. County meets first of the month. First week of the month, so week. it'll be ahead of yours. So make sure we get the survey in time for the county so we can dot all our T's across all our I's. Dot all our I's across all our T's. Okay, thank you.
Yeah. I can be in touch with you tomorrow. Oh, then you want this back? I what? think I need it for Tommy. Well, this is just the construction plan, so the actual construction. It's not the survey of the property. Okay. So I don't think you do need it for Okay. I'm Mark. Oh, yeah. Alan. Oh. Gary. Hey. Yeah, them, them guys. Oh. You know them guys? Yeah, we're right here. He's a kid on the block. Yeah. Good. Uh, okay, so the next is, is the disposition of the Pines restaurant, bar, bike club, whatever. Um, and there's no application for the board. But the owner, Mr. Bernstein, is confused at how to proceed. You're Mr. Bernstein, correct? Right? I am. Could you please tell us, what, from your point of view, what has transpired so far? Yeah. So what is it, what the situation yeah, is? Yeah, Chief, thank you so much. Um, so I opened the Pines four and a half years ago. Um, we did live music all the time. Uh, it's on my liquor license. It is in all my insurances. It was something that I spoke to Warren Tuck at the time who was the zoning enforcer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was put before the board, I was told, as far as I did the light business, which was lodging restaurant, Tiso's Restaurant and Inn, had been there for 55 years prior to me. Um, so I've been operating, doing my business um, without any complaints. Um, as we all know, we're in a global pandemic, which has kind of pushed my business outside. Um, I'm lucky that I have a nice piece of land that I can you know, be able to expand out there and be able to serve people food and do what we do in a safe manner. Um, last summer, we did music on Saturdays. Um, I dealt with my, my contiguous neighbors, talked about it. Um, there were some um, concerns at which the time I had dealt with with them. And that is that we only do music on Saturdays between a few hours ranging like five to eight or done before dark. Is it um, every Saturday? Every three curves? It's, it's pretty much, we try to when it's nice weather, but it rains a lot, and so it's not every Saturday. Um, I took my first vacation in five years, and I came home to this certified letter in the mailbox, um, which was threatening me with fines and imprisonment if I was not compliant. Okay. This is the first I'm hearing of anything, so it's a little strange to me. If you're not um, compliant to what? If I'm not compliant to doing no music. So this is also a noise violation of, that I'm being told. Um, I have since done the FOIA Act, and the Shandakin police have never been called once okay. about my restaurant. Okay. When I filed the FOIA Act with the zoning department, at the time that I filed it, there were no formal complaints. How he solicited complaints, I have it right here. He emailed people asking for complaints. Okay. To me, that feels a little unethical. I'm not sure. But to me, Oh, also, if I could backtrack a second, the minute I got the letter, I called Sarah. Okay. I tried to figure out what was going on because it was it was very uh, surprising to me. Um, I then came in and met with Howie, and he had said to me that I needed to, it all of a sudden became a zoning issue when it was a noise issue. Now, the zoning issue says no nightclubs in our zoning. These codes are written in 1976. I happen to know there are nightclubs that existed after that, right down the street from me for years. I'm not a nightclub. I'm basically a day club. I have families that come and put blankets out and listen to music. Um, I, have, I have letters that I can leave you with, with all of my contiguous neighbors that are in full support and explain that we've been very neighborly with each other and that they've come and complained to me with issues. I've worked on them. Another issue that was brought to my attention after the fact, as this saga has continued, was that some people are concerned with parking. I've spent $20,000 on my parking lot making it bigger. I've spoken to the police. I have worked with Pamela Hammond on getting the town to put up no parking signs. I worked with my other neighbor, Catherine, 
on roping off an area that people were parking and they weren't supposed to. I have, as far as I know, I've been a good neighbor and I have tried to, to make things nice. Um, this stuff comes as a surprise. It feels like an attack. I'm not sure what's going on. There's emails between Howie and Peter Disclafani, who's another neighbor of mine. He's also a town board member. To me, that also feels unethical, but they're behind closed doors and talking about my property and my business instead of coming to me like a human being. Okay. And um, so that's where I'm at. I want to know, I'm not a night club. And I know there's some part of the code that says if the music is integral to your business, then you're allowed to do it. It is integral to my business. And I do it respectfully. And we end it a, a, a good hour. And it's one day a week, a few months a year. I would love to go. Some of the complaints that were solicited and came in uh, state that I go for four hours deep into the night. This is not true. My other neighbors will tell you this is not true. Um, and so I, I want to be able to, uh, also I've gotten these complaints um, that people have said, Jeremy could have gone back inside months ago and he didn't. Jeremy could not have gone back inside months ago. We're all wearing masks here. I'm fully vaccinated. My whole staff is. The Delta virus is raging. I am not putting my staff in harm's way, and I'm not putting my customers in harm's way. And I want to be able to provide the fun day that we provide for the community, for so many people that in this dark time need a little enjoyment in their life. And it's very reasonable hours. I would love to do music inside. I just can't do it then. So I would like to know, in these codes, do I need a variance to do that? If so, I would love to take the proper channels, or I want to know, because it's integral to my business, I can look up that code and send an email to you guys. I, I misplaced it in my stack. Um, I have the code right here. OK. So uh, I would like to know if, indeed, I need that. And I would also like to know if it's um, proper protocol to send these kind of certified letters without it going to a town clerk, without it going to a town supervisor, without it going to the zoning board. Why, this feels like a lot of stuff's been done behind closed doors, and uh, it, it feels pretty bad. feels like an abuse of power. Why exactly, why exactly are you here? I'm here because I've gotten letters and several emails from Howie telling me that I'm not allowed to do music outside. I, I, um, I have been completely compliant since the day I got this letter. We have not done live music since July 10th. It's over a month. I'm not trying to be pushy or a bad person. I'm trying to do it by the book. I'm trying to be respectful of whatever the law is. And, and I, so I want to know. Am I able to do that between the hours of, of 5 and 7.30, 8 o'clock, stopping before dark? Anyone can do that in their backyard. And I know, I happen to know that Sham Dakin doesn't even have decibel readers. So who's going to come and read the decibel if, I have a, if I'm playing loud music? Not only that, uh, the police have never been called once. Never for parking, never for noise. And the only complaints that are formalized were solicited. I have the emails. You guys probably have them as well. I can hand you all of them if you would like. All right. So just so the crew understands, Mr. Bernstein is not here. Uh, applying for variance is here for guidance as to whether or not you need variance. Right. So a couple of things. When, when, when was your first concert? Outdoor concert. Last when? summer. What, when? For the pandemic, we did it. I didn't open until August. I was closed for five months, uh, from March 14th to August 6th. Um, I had a bunch of outdoor projects. I did a septic with the DEC and the CWC. I wasn't able to open until August. So I did music August, September, part of October. Last August. Last August, September, part of October. And then I did some music. I think the first concert, uh, that the first little show we did was um, maybe May or June. Okay. And then so we've so, only done about five this year because of rain and because I stopped on July 10th. Okay, so Howie, that begs the question is, why are we getting this place now? I mean, why is he here? 
to be seeking guidance from us. Yeah. He's in a R1.5 right now. Correct. Residential. Residential. Yeah. 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 That's not the question. The question yeah. was, why is this deep? Why are we seeking complaints now and not when we first started this? He, he, he's had a number of concerts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're just now receiving complaints. Any, any well, explanation for that? Howie yeah. told me in the office that he heard that at a party. These are not formal complaints. It's hearsay. Yeah. Did you receive formal complaints in the new department? I, I received a bunch of verbal complaints. And um, first of all, I didn't, I didn't solicit. Okay. I didn't solicit anybody. I didn't tell people, call people and say, you got to come in. I, I was at a gathering. I wouldn't go on a party. It was small, maybe 16 people. Okay. And it was a group of people standing and talking. Okay. And they're on Miller Road, across the street. From right. Across the river as well, right? Across the river, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so they started to talk about it. And I said, as town building inspector, what you need to do is file a complaint. If that's soliciting, anybody who calls the office with a complaint, I say, file a complaint. We have a form mm -hmm. on our website. You can download it, mm -hmm. fill it out. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. Okay. And what exactly was the complaint? Loud music. And you, did we now find out whether it was loud or not? We don't have, we don't have a, a sound. Yeah. There's no way to turn around. Excuse me, no, Mark, I, I, have, I have something to say about that, which is that uh, I got the letter on July 19th. Uh -huh. His formal complaints came in on August 10th, and okay. there is an email from Howie asking for them to complain. Okay. So if you would like to see that, I have the FOIA app. I have it all. Let me see. All right. and this stuff happened. This one was on July 29th, which is 10 days after. And then there's another one that came in on August. I mean, is this actually a concert, or you just have a band there, one band that plays music? We have, the, we have a band that plays music yeah. for a few hours while people eat food yeah, and enjoy themselves. It's not a concert. It's playing it's music <laughs> for your that's right. customers or patrons. Well, first of all, understand that if the building inspector receives any complaint, he's obligated to have a Even if it's at a party? Like this is no, I'm not getting, you didn't get formal complaints to your town until a month after I got my letter from him. After I hadn't done music for a month. That's so problematic. Nothing is well, I explained. Up. I explained to people that there was a process. Because I oh, told Jeremy, yeah. I mean, the only avenue I see is to go for a used variance. And I advised them that it's very, very difficult. Um, and possibly unnecessary. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I should have to say that the complaints that came in, none of the people want to shut Jeremy down. Yes, I did have a conversation with Peter, who's on the, uh, who's on the town board, and he mentioned, but he didn't write a formal letter, mm -hmm. and, and he didn't push me or shove me into soliciting. But let me just say that all of the complaints we got from people have said they're looking for a compromise. And I suggested to him, maybe acoustic music outside would be acceptable. And acoustic, what? Acoustic, acoustic music. music. Okay. You know, they're playing the band, they've got mics, they've got right. drums, they've got amplifiers. It's in a residential neighborhood. Okay. And it's happening frequently on Saturday nights. And a lot of people said they, they kept their mouths shut because they realized how, you know, our hospitality people were in bad shape. So right. they accommodated that. <laughs> and I, I know personally that people are very reluctant to complain. Mm -hmm. And when the cops are called to, for a noise complaint, basically what they say is, we just turn it down for a little while. Mm -hmm. And okay. so that's the reality. So people are willing to compromise here. Mm -hmm. And in the R1.5, a tavern, a bar, a nightclub, it's not permitted. Okay. Now, Tizos was pre-existing non-conforming, right. right? They never had live music outside. Okay. So that's the issue. Okay, so, so the restaurant is grandfathered in the Tizos, you're purchasing the Tizos. Yes. 
Um, and you're also a lodging facility, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so let's walk through the zoning code. You're calling this a nightclub. So you look at the definition, I, mean, it's, I think it's a poor definition. I said that. It's the closest, though, and I looked to, yeah. It's the closest it's definition. It's not a nightclub. Well, here's the definition of nightclub as per the zoning code, which you observe was written in 1974. I think pre. 76. Pre. Um, non conforming pre existing. Uh, yeah. Um, Okay, a drinking establishment which, which includes an area in which patrons may dance or which provides live entertainment other than by a single instrumental musician or vocalist. Okay, so by that definition you may be considered a nightclub. So let's turn to the uh, zoning laws here in R1.5. Mm -hmm. A tavern, bar, or nightclub not integral, not integral, a hotel. To a hotel, motel, or lodge development, it's true, it's not permitted R1.5. Your tavern, nightclub, call it whatever you want, is integral. That's right. So, by implication, does that mean in the zoning code that if it is integral, it's allowed? Well, okay. nothing in the zoning code actually addresses that. So the zoning code doesn't go quite far enough in addressing that. So it's a hole in the zoning code. We want to be strict interpretations. Okay, so it's going to be up to us to have to prepare for this. Let me ask you a question. Does the Emerson have a nightclub license? I'm sorry. The Emerson, the Emerson Resort, do they have a nightclub license? Like they, they do parties, they do weddings. You can hear the music from the Emerson all the way over on Plank Road. I mean, do they have a special? They're in a different district. They're in uh, highway business. So, so it's a different code. I don't know. You, you have to look in front of you. They still go to 11 at night. So does Foxfire. I, I feel yeah. like I'm being singled out, which and then, and then for years, in that same district, he said you had the old white front. Yeah. And then it became the horseman. When they played music before 4 in the morning. White yeah. Water Depot, right? White Water Depot. Yeah, White Water Depot, Depot, Depot is also, also the old Murder Hamlet. Sorry, business commercial. It is. It's right down the street, street from me. Yeah, it is. But, but, but they require a special permit by that same code that you just read. You require a special use permit, yes. Okay. Go back to the hours. I mean, you you never went past eight o'clock. Uh, maybe once we did, but but very, if if so, it was it, it never gone into dark. And and I have worked very hard this year that it's always done by eight. O'clock. Generally eight, four o'clock to. It's to not even at four o'clock. It's it's five five thirty to seven thirty eight at the latest. Let's delve a little deeper into the codes. There is a noise regulation, and that noise regulation is at the R five R three R one point five, which you're in. Yes. Uh, from seven a.m. a.m. to seven p.m. is fifty seven decibels. Yep. And then okay. there's a, another from uh, 7 o'clock at night till 7 in the morning. 7 in the morning, 53 decibels. 53. So how much is 57 decibels? Well, if you look it up on, uh, if you Google, uh, you'll find out that conversation with an air conditioner is typically, with an air conditioner on, is typically 60 decibels. Um, oh, you got it here. Uh, subway, show the conversation, 90, 95 decibels. This is what kills me. Uh, gas power lawn or 80 to 85 decibels. So every time I mow my lawn, I'm in violation of the noise code. The codes are very okay. strict. Yeah. Well, and if it's a you know it's a certain type of tone sound, you deduct five decibels from that. For any source of sound which emits a pure tone, a discrete tone, or impulsive sound, does that describe any of your music? No, it's no. sweet, lovely, soft melodies. Oh, that's not in here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the maximum sound limit set forth above shall be reduced by 5 dBA. So, again, this is written in 1970. This is totally unrealistic. It's, mm -hmm. it's totally unrealistic. Unrealistic. Well, then you have to change the code. And it, it actually is written in dBA, which is different from decibels. Yes. dBA is an attenuated decibel where the actual volume limit is different based on the tone and how the human ear perceives it. A lower tone will have a much higher decibel. It'll be, take a louder low tone to reach 53 dBA than it will a high tone. Uh -huh. So music, even if you kept it at a constant volume, is going to go like this on a dBA. When the low notes are plated, 
the de decibel level is the same, but the DBA drops way down. So you just need to have everybody sing in a bass tone and you're fine. That sounds good. Normal conversation, background music, 60 decibels. Wrestling leaves, 30 decibels. So, um, and as Elizabeth points out, there's not a single commercial generator in the market that's probably below about 120 decibels, including mine. So, um, I, I, by my reading of the code, you guys have to let me know if you agree that he's allowed to have music on his on premise. Yeah, I agree. If, if, I, I agree with that too. He's allowed. I mean, I, if, if he was doing it every night of the week, and he was just running concert, yeah, it's, it's, this isn't even a concert. It's, it's only just eight o'clock at night. night. That's early. Sure. And the other issue of my concern is that you know this is a community that is deeply steeped in our musical tradition. You're half an hour, half a mile to go from Woodstock, and Woodstock every 20 citizens is some kind of accomplished international known I grew up in Woodstock, so and I've lived in Chichester for 20 years. I'm a taxpayer in Chattanooga. I vote you. I'm reluctant to make any decision on this board which would impugn the ability of anybody to, to stage a musical performance reasonable vis a vis in community. I, I think you should care. I think we should give them a permit to keep the music on at least till midnight. Oh, midnight? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we were like that guy. All right. You can either dance in here. No. Um, so, uh, the way I read this is uh, it's illegal for you to have musical performance. And by the way, if you can move it indoors, that solves the problem right away. Anyway, yes, and I would love to, but right now we're in a raging pandemic. It's not that. The way I read this is you don't need a uh, Use variance, you need a special permit from the town board to exceed the decibel levels of your performance. Can I get any agreement on that? We, we, you would need a special permit from the planning board to be able to exceed the allowable decibel regulation. I think that would have to go before the town board. For a special permit? No, to, to change the code. I didn't say that. I said special permit to exceed the code. So then you're going to give Jeremy a special permit, and then how many other people in town are going to stop playing music in their backyard? And they're already doing it. It happens everywhere. If you stand Thoughts on your back porch and talk to somebody, you're breaking the law. People play live music. Yeah. It is the Catskills. It is the home of Woodstock. People come to our area to spend money mm -hmm. to see music. We all know we live in a tourist area. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Woodstock. Woodstock wouldn't be there if it wasn't for tourists coming through. It wouldn't be there if music wasn't there, if wonderful restaurants weren't there. We provide beautiful local food for people. We provide a little bit of entertainment on a Saturday. If, if the code says 7 p.m., I will stop music at 7 p.m. on the dot. Well, you just have to reduce it to 53 dB. So where is that measured from? Pardon? Where is that measured from? How far? Across the street? Where, where, where's the measurement I would, I would suggest the next door neighbor. Well, it, it, uh, from what I've been told by the police, that it would be measured from the complaintant's house. Mm -hmm. Do you have yes. a complainant's next door to you? Well, and again, right. directly talking about theoretically. Right so the nearest there, one, there is no meter. We, we can yes. assume would be well under the allowable. Right. You have to street. see when they complain. Right. If right. they complain. How would that could be a special? So right across the street, I would still say would probably be well underneath there. I, I, I know the music that's played there, and it's not it's not content of any loudness. It's not that loud. And well, Chad Aiken doesn't have a decibel reader, so I don't know who's going to read it. Yeah. Uh, how that could be a, 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 a conditional permit? He has to stop the music at 8 p.m. I don't think. I don't think you can do that. I don't think we don't well, do that. I don't know. Do that. I think you might have, have a right to do what he's doing. Do 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 let it be. I mean, really, he's really not ready to do it. Yeah, if, if he's, if like he's allowed before, to have the nightclub, which is, I agree with your interpretation of that line. It's integral. He is allowed to operate it. It's integral to the, the lodge, the restaurant. Um, then there comes the problem of if, if we start receiving complaints at the police department because of loud noise, they can check it out. And the police complaints are not the only uh, yeah. identifier. There are complaints to the building. Well, but those complaints came in after the concerts have stopped. Uh, so we, we need an actual, okay, there's a complaint right now. He's too loud right now. 
and that is, you know, when we're going to need to check it out. And then I agree also that the code is outdated, and this is one of the ones that we have to figure out how do we how do we make this so, so that it's legal for you to mow your lawn again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I um, think that's a, those are two separate issues, but yeah. but. Well, you know, you're, you're like a town board in the middle of this. Whoa, 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 what have you decided here? Um, you haven't done anything yet. We're asking you to do your job. I, I, I know. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't know why it would be referred to the town board. I mean, I'm, saying, I'm saying I'm saying he needs a special permit, or, or he should ask for a okay, special well, permit. How is that done? How is that done? Before it goes from you, you give a special, any kind of special permit is a variance. You vary from the existing law. So if you're going to vary from it, it goes before the CBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals, to review whether it needs an additional allowance. My understanding is this board cannot issue a special permit. That's only the plan. I, 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 no, I, 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 no, I agree with you. But I think we can, we can issue a variance, so not a special permit. It may, job, maybe a variance job, is more appropriate. Your job is to issue the decision and refer that to the planning board. The planning board issues the actual permit. That's what I'm suggesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm suggesting. So let, let's hold on there for a second. Does he really I'd like that? I'd like to just back up. And I'm sorry, Jeremy, if you could, so I can see the board. Jeremy. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the first issue is we, we keep going around the destiny. Yeah. Now, I know for a fact that Mr. McGowan had a conversation with our chief of police regarding this matter a few, few months ago or a few weeks ago. Okay. He himself had come. We do not have anybody certified, which costs the town money, to do a decimal because we have very rare uses for it. Right. And, and to that extent that we have to follow through in court. We've never gone to court for a noise to Right. Secondly, you, yeah, he's had corrupt, you test from the house of the complainant, not from his own property. Right. So that's two. Number three, the complaints were originally anonymous verbal complaints. There was no hard evidentiary proof. Okay. How he did not, he said, he did not hear it himself. When it came to parking, there were no photos. There was nothing to attest to. The police had no record of any complaints on either side of that. So to go on, as Jeremy said, basically hearsay and issue a letter saying we're going to give you a violation. That was the first step. And, and believe me, the town is not going to incur the cost of, you have to certify an officer, they have to be certified at least annually, I think maybe it's every six months, with the state to use the decimator. Really? Yes. You have to get a certified decimator that has to be sent to the state for recalculation periodically to ensure that it's doing the job correctly. Second of all, you call and ask to have that done from the complaints property. You can't do that if you have an anonymous verbal complaint. You can't go to the property because you don't know who's complaining. So I think how we went to look to see the complaint so if we could follow through with the decimator, then it could be tested for most people's problems. Uh -huh. and that, that may have been the, the ultimate end game for him is what he was looking at. And, and the other things, the band, uh, the size of the band, acoustic, I'd like to see in the code book specifically where it defines. Now, I heard you say, you know, they can have a small band for nightclub or something. You said it's a small band, it's not a large band, whatever. But he's taking that, and, and again, I agree that it's, it's a hotel, motel, a hotel in integral to the business. So it's basically a hotel that has that single exception because he's in integral. Right. It gives him that exemption. Therefore, yeah. yeah. I also do agree with Howie that I think Jeremy should agree to say 7 o'clock, knowing that he's in a residential district, 7 o'clock, stop the music. That's it. Then there's no question. Because he could be running a lawnmower, he could have six of them lined up on his property line until 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. that night. And well, believe me, I have a neighbor that mows at 8 o'clock at night. It doesn't really bother me. But I mean, well, well, technically, that is a violation of, of the uh, of the code. The no, it's code. not. Yes, not, it is. Not for day use. That's for a time from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. overnight. It says 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. residential to 50, 57 dBA. No, we don't know. We don't know. No, but we just demonstrated 57 dBA is ridiculously low. Yeah. Yeah, see, we, I didn't see anything about residential district 
Where's the first? Well, I'll show, the gates. I'll show you on my way out. Okay. 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 So, so, no argument. That being said, either way, there's still no evidentiary proof about the noise. Correct. Then that spins into we need a, he needs a permit in order to operate because technically it's illegal, whether it's a nightclub or even a hotel restaurant. So essentially, it's going towards if you don't respond, we're shutting you down unless you get the permit. The use variance is difficult to get. Okay? But a special yeah. permit is not so difficult to get. So hold, hold on, before we take that step, why is he being required? He, he has talked to Warren Tuck back in the day. It was presented before the planning board. They looked at it for site plan for his parking area to ensure that it was within the parameters they needed. It fit. They said there's no permit necessary at the time, and Warren agreed. He had a letter from Joe Tizzo saying it was only closed a year and a half for renovation. Under the code, you allow closure for five years to continue the existing operation. Right. So it's pre-existing, non-conforming as Tizzo's, right. and it continued as the Pines, well within the five-year limit, as a pre-existing, non-conforming operation. Okay. That's been thrown out the window. We need a permit now. Well, there's no permit issue because no permit was required at the time. It was a continuation of the existing usage of the property as it was considered acceptable right. as being prior to the adoption of the zoning code. Right. So that's where that went. But I don't think there was an investigation deeper into that to see why that occurred or what occurred with that. It was just need a, need a special a use variance and otherwise you're going to be closed. And that's what Jer I mean, Jeremy came into my office talking to me about it at the beginning of the month. And I had no idea any of this was going on. And I asked how he'd come down and explain what was going on after Jeremy left. And he gave his position. I did not wholly agree with him at the time. And I still have issues with what's being said. But I also have to add, Jeremy has threatened litigation and the town should be responding with, well, from the town board, we're basically talking to our attorneys about what's going on, what's transpired, and where we go from here. Because if it does move forward to the court or violation factor, it has to go before justice. And that may have to move out of town because of conflict of interest or something. Generally, it's a change of venue, which you move it out of town. You're going to be talking months. To, end, to the end game, the judge going, so who are your witnesses? Well, I have these, but they're dated uh, almost a month after, and I have no proof, actual hard evidence or proof of the sound issue to begin with that started the whole ball rolling at the start. So, well, if, if, if all, all of that is true, which I believe it all is, because I know the previous owner, and I know that he did have music there because Chuck used to play all the time. Um, this is true. You know, is a recording musician. How, however, to to try and resolve this issue, wouldn't it be best to go back to the building department and have the building department re-examine what they did and why they did it and maybe withdraw whatever they presented to Mr. Bernstein? I, I, that's, well, that's up to the code officer. Yeah, I, I know. But, but the other, to Jeremy's point as well, Every restaurant in this town moved outdoors last year, especially. Yes. Some even added movies, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cornhole games, all kinds of outside games. Uh, I mean, I live next to the arms. My, my front door is literally 40 feet from the back porch of the arms. My wife worked there for 20 years. They had music, but it was inside, inside the, 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 the base. They came outside with music. I have no saying it, but it, to be honest, it really doesn't bother me. They play actually kind of nice music. So, you know, if they don't like it, I shut the door and put the AC on and I don't hear anything. So. Yeah, Rob, you're in the middle of town. But they were also adjacent in two seat. residential parcels. So yeah. They're actually going to the but same You're on Main Street. And, and they probably the the play music. And music residential behind them. I don't have any record. From my recollection, the Tizos. It's a quiet little restaurant. That's what it was. And Thank now, the people are not objecting to Jeremy playing music inside. Mm -hmm. They're objecting to the outdoor 
I mean, it's, it's practically in some people's backyard. It's in, and I, isn't it in the previous owner's backyard? And he owns the house across the street that's adjacent to it? I have contiguous neighbors' letters for all of you guys, all stating that, that I've worked with them as a nice neighbor, that they have agreed to a Saturday music at the time in which I mean, we I, do the music. I, I kind of agree with you because you're only doing it uh, one, one night a week, and it's kind of give back to the patrons and, and the people that up to your restaurant. Families come, kids run yeah, around, that's they, they have a wonderful time, and, and then it's we shut, shut down at dark. We shut down at dark. We're Sun done is dark. Dark is earlier. Well, dark is now getting earlier, which means it's going to be dark. It's, it's, music it's, would be done way before dark, yeah, because yeah. you got to break down, you got to clean up, you got to... It, it's, it's a reasonable request. Okay. So how we Rob, if we grant this person an uh, use variance to allow a nightclub and perform music, how does that offer remedy, Rob? How does it offer remedy to the complainants? That, then he gives him license to play as loud as he wants any, any time he wants. That's not a remedy. No, it's not. And I don't even want to do that. I want to have a nice Saturday afternoon where, where our patrons come, our community, and have a nice time and provide that. It's done, as I said, it's done by dark or before dark. It's wow. only happening one day a week. If it rains, it doesn't happen. It's only happening a few months a year. And once we're over this uh, COVID issue, it'll be indoors. We'll be doing indoors. Indoor music indoors. Thereby removing the... That's, that's the major complaint, is the outdoor music. And if Jeremy's gonna say, well, as soon as the COVID thing is gone, I'm only going to do music inside. Everybody would be happy. I would also like to say that um, out of the complainants, there's only one that has come to me and talked to me. And we've talked about stuff. I thought we were on, on a good page. Okay. But now there is a complaint. Uh, the other ones have never come and talked to me. If someone comes and talks to me, I take the time to listen, to find out what's going on to understand where the problem is and to try to fix it. Well, that's always the ideal solution. Yeah. So. And, and uh, so these people all also say that they enjoy coming to my restaurant and they spend money and eat there. Uh, this day that we do on Saturdays helps to keep my restaurant alive. It helps to keep my employees paid and it helps to keep the restaurant going. It helps to keep a place where the community comes to gather to eat food and to enjoy themselves. And that day is integral, integral to my, to my business. The, the prevailing sentiment that this committee is also going on, and the way I was trying to run this committee is three things. One is community safety, keeping everybody out of peril. The second thing is maintaining the economic viability of the community. And the third thing is maintaining the community character. Do you all agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So what do you? I agree. I, I think that this is not an issue. That's what I think. I mean, for the time that he's doing what he's doing, I don't think it should be an issue. I think the complaints are warranted. I know that you can make a complaint. Anybody can complain about anything. Right. If whether they have How do you know the complaints are unwarranted? I I I don't know that. As a just like you don't know how loud it is, I don't know that. I'm right. going by experience and judgment. But if there's I'm, a complaint, you can't see that. I'm a musician as well. I'm the last person who wants to chase the music out of Shandy. There's no place left. And I play music outside, and it's very different than inside. In, inside, the, the sound bounces off the walls. It gets dissipated. Outside, it gets projected. I, I still think it's not an issue because it's from 4 to 7, 4 to 8 o'clock. I don't, I don't see what the issue is. Well, if, if he's going he's to shut the music down at 7 o'clock, he can go in four to 57 decibels. It's 57, 57 decibels. DDA is not decibels. Okay. It's a different DDA, meter. Yes. So right. if you guys can figure out what that is, if your town can get the equipment and tell me what that is, mm -hmm. I will abide to it. Otherwise, I, I, I can't. Yeah, we have. You can buy the instrument and walk across the street. But I don't have to. There's somebody in the back that raised their hand if you want public. Uh, well, first of all, it's not a public comment. 
Okay, well, you speak. Speak. Okay. Hey. Did you so have any advice? Speak. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, uh, your, I didn't know this was going to be a, 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 you're just going to decide things without some sort of hearing from others that do live in the neighborhood and uh, have, have issued a complaint, not solicited. And I think your idea of what the sound is, is not realistic. And I don't think Jeremy, in all good faith, is, is realistic for him either. Because I don't think he's experienced it in, he's experienced it in his restaurant and what they're doing, but he's not experiencing it if you're in a house. I don't have central window. I can't just close the windows. Okay. Um, so I, it's a sound issue. That's really, yeah. and it's also a parking issue um, because it spills out. It's not just in Jeremy's parking lots, which he has extensively built. I appreciate all of that. But it's now all up down the 212, all around Heinz. It's, it's, it, it, it occupies a, a lot of the debt uh, for those of us who live there. And I, I think there is compromise to be had, uh, but I don't think the compromise is just just carry on. And if you come over to my house on a Saturday afternoon and hear it at the level that it's been, I think you'd understand it's a reasonable complaint. I don't need a decimal here to tell me that I can't get away from the sound. Um, uh, or that my house is not vibrating. Uh, or if I go across the river, that it's almost even louder over there because it's working as an amphitheater off the mountain. Um, so do you mind what would be an appropriate compromise? Probably acoustic, or at the very least, turning it down a lot. It's amplified. Uh, you, you can hear that music very well on the property without that level of amplification. And I love music. I, I'm not, I, I, I do. I love music. I don't, and I, I don't want, I want Jeremy to be successful. I want the Pines to be successful. I've supported this restaurant, uh, but this is becoming unsustainable, and it doesn't seem that there's any intention to pull it back, but more to expand it. And that's really, I think, what worries me, that there is always an intention to continue. And so if this is an inconvenience every couple weekends out of the summer for two hours, you're saying that's unsustainable? It, well, it's from long. May to October. And, every um, couple of weeks? Every, every week, week, every week. Mm -hmm. Don't people mow lawns on weekends? Yeah, they, they, you have to put up with that. You have to put up with the tree cutting. You have to put up with all of that. But and you the also have to, building, the house building, all that. But you the also, albums, yes, and, yeah. and septic building and everything else. All of it. We don't need to be, you know, we can tit for tat, and it's not going to help. There, there, I think there's a way to make this work. That, that you don't suffer and the, the neighborhood doesn't suffer. But we're, we're here now, the people about, who have not heard it, about to say, go ahead. And uh, go ahead with some kind of understanding, maybe. But just to go ahead without hearing anything from anybody else that is not. That's not the case. We said to you when you came in that this is not a public hearing. Yes, if it proceeds to that, there will be a public hearing. You will have adequate. Okay, I misunderstood. It sounded like you were just moving towards, you were going to just okay this, and there wasn't going to be a public hearing. Well, no, where, where, we're, where we're at is we're trying to decide if if he needs a permit. In order for us to say he needs a variance or a permit, right. he needs to be doing something that is a violation, and that's what we're trying to determine. I understand. That, that part I understand. Yeah, and I, so far, I don't think we've identified an actual violation. We can't measure the decibel, so that, that conversation's a dead end. There's no reason to say that word again, because we have no way to measure it, so I don't see why we would talk about whether he's at 53 or 57. So it comes down to whether or not he is legally entitled by our code to operate a nightclub. Bad word for what he's doing, but it's what we got, or not. And our interpretation of the code, unless someone else has a different interpretation of the code, is yes, he is. And I have one other thing is that, I know I said it earlier, but, uh, and this is for you guys as well. I, when I got this letter, the first thing I did was call the office. 
Mm -hmm. I'm being compliant. I am trying to be a good neighbor. I try to understand and figure out where these things were coming from. I also have not played a concert, even though I could have. I had 30 days to comply. I could have done a concert every weekend for a month. And I did not. So, so I, I am trying. I'm working with my neighbors. As you see, I've got the ones that actually touch my property line, contiguous abutting neighbors, that have all written letters. I would hope you guys would read them. Um, and and uh, and I've been and I've been doing the best I can while losing money because of it, mm -hmm. loss of revenue, and just to be a good neighbor and to be good with the town. Um, yeah. I know. Just one more to, to further what I was saying, and I, and I think Jeremy obviously, at least, is going to agree with some of what I've said because he did shut himself down for a month. Um, I, I don't know, uh, based on what Rob said, what other people have heard, I, I don't know how the ZBA enforces noise violations. I, I don't. I see no way for us to do anything about that. But that's what this stems from, and yet there are no, there were no, there may be no official complaints. Uh, I think moving forward, since this has become an issue, and the neighbors are speaking up, some positive, some not exactly negative, but conscientious and are looking for a solution. Um, I would imagine if this really is a problem moving forward after the next couple of concerts, there will be official complaints if it is actually a problem. And I'm, and I'm not arguing with anybody. As you said, I don't know. I have been to the Pines on a Saturday afternoon uh, at one of the first concerts you did. It didn't strike me as loud. I was up at the you know, the uh, Jeff's area, the coffee shack there, and was able to carry on <coughs> a normal speaking volume, hearing the people I was speaking to, of whether or not a permit is needed, if it is integral. So, I, so and it's, it's, it, it, there might be a hole in the code, maybe we do need to say that, but right now it doesn't say it, and we have to go by literal interpretation. We don't get to say, well, it doesn't say it, so we imagine they meant to write down. You know, we don't, I don't see where we get to do that. I think there is a hole in the code. And what Hubbard said is dispositive. Just because it's not mentioned in the code doesn't mean it's not allowed, mm -hmm. correct? <clears throat> and, and it's also past practice. And yeah. pre-existing non-conformity. I mean, those are the issues that you have to look at. You know, some people can read a paragraph and say it means this. Other people read a paragraph and say it means something else. But what it really means is the way it's been been uh, presented for the last 50 years. You know, whatever the person has done for 50 years, and nobody complained about it. So that business has been at least I know 40 years. Joe's mother, his father, Joe Tiso. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there no some music there. No complaint about the restaurant. It's the outdoor views. So you're speaking to community standards, yeah. basically. But if we do grant a nightclub license, and then you can play a lot of music whenever or whatever time you want, so how, how is that a solution? Uh, well, I'm not saying you should do that. Yeah, no, I don't think that's a solution at all. I agree. Yeah. 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 Who indicated that Mr. Bernstein has a nightclub? The definition how, may... How the definition. It's the definition. The yeah. definition may... Yeah. Uh, that more than one singer, good. more than one instrumentalist, or a place to dance, you're a nightclub in Shandaken. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, in, your, in your backyard, I've been, you can't play music in your backyard up until seven o'clock. You can't mow your lawn. You can't run an air well, conditioner. No, you can't run. After, that's after seven. That's, until seven. Is well, even then, if, if your lawnmower is under fifty-seven dBA, right. you can use it. I have an electric one. I'm in compliance. Um, well, I should say after that, if your lawn gets to be over ten inches, you're yep, also in violation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with an electric. Any lawnmower. Yeah, if, you're if your lawn lawn's over, over 10, 10 inches high, high, you're actually in violation. Well, I, you know, I don't know if this is helping or hurting uh, Jeremy. I mean, I, you know, uh, I, I don't see where you've broken any of the town laws, me personally. Uh, well, I appreciate uh, that. That's why I came here tonight was to understand from from the board what the interpretations of these laws are, and what I'm doing, what I've been doing, what I'm insured to do, what my liquor license says I can do, 
Um, what I have been doing for over a year now, last summer with the pandemic, um, and and hear from you guys whether or not Harry told me I needed to get a variance. I wanted to find out from you guys. It doesn't sound like I need a variance. I. The, how do you guys feel? Does anyone in this board want to see Mr. Bernstein apply for a variance for a nightclub in an auto one five district? Anybody I think if he happen? opened up a new business that, you know, when he just started the business, that would be one issue. But that business is in existence for God knows yeah, how I mean, does he need anything? I don't think so. I think he's conforming as it is. I don't see what it's about. How do we address the uh, noise complaints from the neighbors? Well, then it's yeah. yeah well, then it's as a as a non, not as the ZBA. Just I, I would I would advise the the neighbors who have spoken to Jeremy about it continue to do so when there is a problem. The neighbors that haven't when they have a problem, let Jeremy know. Uh, I quickly skimmed these letters. They say he has responded to their concerns, uh, and if that fails, then sorry, Jeremy. Then they call the police if there is a, a valid complaint. Um, I mean, that's, that's the way it works. If you have a complaint about a noise that is handled by the town of Shendaken Police Department. Right now, he's in violation of, of the zoning officer in the town of Shendaken. That, that's and a separate he's got issue, a yeah. open Bob violation <laughs> that he's got litigated. Just, just to simplify it, the noise orders, we can change DBAs, decibels, whatever. We still, we're not going to get decimeters certified by the state and the guy certified by the, it's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So why, sure. why do we ask people to call the police? Because the police don't necessarily write down a formal thing. They don't make a big deal. 99% yeah. of the time, and I'll tell you one of them is uh, campgrounds. I'm not going to say which one specifically, but one routinely has people, guests that come in and they start playing music loud at night. Yeah. And the police are called, sometimes by other campers, and they show up, and the, the common comment is general noise complaint, uh, went, to, went to address, respondents responded immediately, no further action required. Yeah. And that's what happens. They go to the people and say, could you please turn it down? They see an officer, and they go, oh, yes, sir. Yeah. And they turn it down, and they comply. Whatever they say, the, the lower the level is great. Yeah, and then we keep her. And you know, at least puts them on notice too. Hey, the cops have been here once already. I probably shouldn't pay attention to this noise in the future. And recall, this is an issue that we vetted in the short-term rental committee. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very, it's a very common thing that we get, especially during the summertime. Now, you know, uh, it's a tourist town. And, and like I said, so <laughs> if you're going to change all of a sudden that he's got to be a nightclub. Well, then I think almost every restaurant in town's got to apply for that because they started putting um, rest music outside. That's why I'm suggesting a special permit unique to this situation may be the solution, which may be conditional for in terms of time. I can just read that. I think the simple inclusion of saying that as long as it's not integral, you're not allowed to. And once it becomes integral, it automatically exempts it. Yes. That's it. So there's no. Nothing to be done. I think that's what, that's what Warren was getting out originally when they issued uh -huh. the continuation of see, the existing That's the way I see it. So it sounds to me like you just said that you agree that a, uh, a special use variance is not the appropriate solution. I'm trying to figure out why he's applying for it. He's not applying for it. No, that's why he came here. He wanted clarification. Yeah. And I don't believe he's clarification. But you're giving clarification where you're just going to use the horn. No, no, I actually feel very clear now, and I also do clarify, um, I've gotten a certified violation email uh, letter, but then Howie emailed me and assured me that there has been no violation issued. So this is also very confusing. I have the emails. You're, you don't have to appear. You haven't been under violation. We just sent you a certified violation email to scare me, to threaten me with imprisonment, fines, I don't know. So but he does not have a violation? What's that? He is not, Jared, I should say, <clears throat> well, the violation, Mr. Bernstein is not in violation of anything right now? The violation letter that we have is threatening, but it's, it's threatening in a way that 
it encourages people to respond to complaints. Yes, and there will be both. consequences. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to send him to court. I wasn't going to send him to jail. I just wanted to say he volunteered not to have the music until this issue was settled, which was great. And thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just sent him that letter because I just wanted him to realize I wasn't going to fine him two hundred and fifty dollars a day. This is a form letter. Is that a violation or not? So he can play music this weekend. I have 30 days to comply to my actual letter that I wasn't actually really being given a violation. I was being scared. And so in being scared, I tried to comply. I came right away. I, came to talk, I called Sarah on the phone, and then I came to Howie in person. Howie in person sent me downstairs to talk to Joyce with a variance application, which is when I then was sent into Rob's office to where I had a conversation with Rob, where the, the logicness, the logic came out of like, I'm, what I'm doing is fine. Yet I still complied and wanted to make sure that what I'm doing is right. What is the means of compliance to the complaint? Not playing music, correct? That's the means of compliance. Well, <clears throat> in respect to Jeremy, he was going through the process. So, I mean, I get complaints from people and I, as long as they're going through the process, when they, they have an appearance ticket, they show up at court. I, I say, they're going through the process, they need more time, let's give them another month, let's give them another yeah. two months, okay? Yeah. But I, I just want to say, for years and years, for many years, for over 20 years, I've had bands play at my house. Yeah. And even in the summertime, with the windows open, the screens, I never got a complaint, except one year I decided to do it outside. And that year, the cops came to my house. Okay. And the complaints were over 2,000 feet away. Yeah, well, you're high on the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Your elevation so, was pretty and, high. You know, like I said, the cops said, turn it down for 20 minutes, Howie, and then let me get out of town. So did the cops but, go to the fines? Never once. No, they, they so didn't. Cops? I'm not I don't understand what we're doing. Yeah, it seems like, is, is this, okay. yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm a code enforcement officer. Are we done issue We can do the um, okay. closure. Yes. Yeah, no, that's, that's, so but that, that, that leaves well, the question that you asked still on the table. Complaint complaint is a verbal complaint. Complaint. It's just a good. So is there an open violation with the bill? I talked to the town attorney, I told him exactly what I did, and he said, how are you did everything the way you supposed to? I would like to talk to him again. Ben Gale, give him a call. I will. So but that, the question remains, okay, we, not, we know he's not going to go to jail. We know he's not going to be fined $250 a day. Can he just go home right now and it's all done and this issue is over? Or is there actually an open violation that he needs to address and deal with? And if so, what is it and how? Because I I, we're all confused. We don't understand if he has a violation or what it is or what he's supposed to do now. If all he was supposed to do is talk to you, well, then he did that. A month ago. Are, are we, uh, I don't think Jeremy don't knows what to do next. And I know supposed to we to don't him. know what he's supposed uh, to do next. about a solution. We need a solution. And part of that solution is to address the complaints. The, the well, he said the there, the either, there is either a violation or there isn't a violation. I'm confused that I have not been issued, issued, there is uh, I've been issued this letter, but then Howie wrote me an email saying that there has no real violation has not been issued. You don't have to go to court. You're not getting fined. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. What exactly does that mean? It, it was very confusing to me, which is why I'm sitting here. But there is a violation of the decibel thing, which we all it's agree is okay and not, not, not able to address. So that's off the table. Yeah. So. All right, so, what do you think? <laughs> look at me. <laughs> no, look at you. I, I have no idea what to think. I mean, I, what, what are we doing? What, are we ruling on something? Are we, no, we're, we're trying to get Mr. Bernstein guidance as to what his next step is. Well, I, it doesn't sound like uh, there's any yeah, step to take. He already read He said he's going to only... He doesn't have a violation. Right, he doesn't have a violation. He's, he's, already, he's, already, he's, he's already adjusted. I mean, he was playing for ladies. Move it back to seven. I mean, that's, that conforms with the, with the code, right? Yeah. Seven o'clock to seven o'clock. Well, then I guess even after seven p.m. to seven a.m., it's just 
three decibels smaller. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. just, it's still louder than what the code says, but we all agree that's the material and updated. So, okay, my opinion is um, you should apply for a special permit to be able to exceed the noise regulation, and that permit could be uh, what we call a conditional permit, so you can only do music, say, from seven, say, from five to seven or something, something like that, so that you will be in compliance with exceeding the noise limit of the zoning regulations. If he's issued a violation. Yeah. If he is if issued, issued a violation. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't been issued a violation, and not only that, uh, I don't want to upset my neighbors. So yeah. I will work on keeping it low. I will work on keeping it within the decibel range that is acceptable uh, for anyone. Well, I, there's a real easy solution. Jeremy? Excuse me, Joe. Can you agree maybe 7 o'clock is your cutoff? At least maybe you can see your 7 o'clock. Number two, this, no, no, I'm sorry, no, you are your answer. Yeah. If you could just meet with her, talk to her about it, and, see, and maybe go over and see what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be happy to. We have spoke before. And I, I, not in a while, but yes. Not in a while, but we, we, happy to. we did speak. Yes, we and, did. And we were in understanding. And we worked on parking together, and we did these things. And we then did That's I great. have. We can talk about the letter we can on, on I'm our own property. And that's all I'm saying. That if we can solve it simply without having to interfere with any kind of action, it, let it be a community thing that he handles. It. And if he doesn't handle it, then of course he can pursue further. And then I don't know where that can come from. I totally agree. And the temperature in the room seems to be that you do have amenable neighbors. We have an amenable owner operator who can't have a dialogue. That would be the simplest solution if you just reached an uh, agreement with your neighbors. I'm super happy to reach a decibel agreement with my neighbors. And I also, I believe, tell me if I'm wrong, from what we just all went through and discussed, it is an integral part to my business and I'm allowed to do music there. I have, it's, it's on my liquor license. Agreed? Yeah, Agreed? Yeah. I'm insured for that. It's on my liquor license. We've been doing it for four years. I, that, I'm here for that, mostly. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, I would love to continue to be able to have these Saturday late afternoon, uh, some music while we serve dinner. This board agrees uh, you are legally allowed to have musical performances. Okay. Um, in, Puning on your neighbors vis-a-vis -vis excessive sound. If you could work that out with your neighbors, I guess Sounds that's our best suggestion at this point. Sounds great. I, I mean, I I thought I had, and I will work with Catherine on this. Mm -hmm. I have, as you, you know, Joe Tiso brings a lawn chair on his lawn, drinks a beer, watches the show. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's. But yes, I will continue to work with them. On this. Uh, I've said in this position many times, we're not marriage counselors, we're not life counselors, but the, the, the ultimate solution, this is a small community. People often talk about X to each other, we, we share each other's issues, we share each other's safety issues, we share, share each other's community value issues, and the best solution to any of these things that come before us is working out within the community and within neighbors. So if that can be done. Totally agree. I okay, well, you do that. he does have neighbors on Miller Road. They should come talk to me then. They've never come to talk to me. They, he said, they he said to me that you never spoke to all your neighbors, but you never spoke to anybody. I spoke to my contiguous, abundant okay. neighbors, Howie, who are the ones that matter the most, and they're the right there. Uh, well, I'm not going to get into this man. I can't them. know that, that the people on Miller Road are unhappy. They, they can come to me and come say, hey, we need your restaurant. Ooh, the music's too loud. They haven't done that. Mm -hmm. And they didn't make a formal complaint until you emailed them. No. Which I have your email. That's, that's not, not so. true. That's I have so. That's not so. I have the email. That's not so. He did not email. I gave a vocal complaint and then I wrote one. When I realized that this was going to come to the zoning board. Okay. Well, I have his email above the formal complaints asking for complaints. So. But it never came to me. I, I didn't say you exactly. Well, it never came to other people on my road. And there, was no, there was no email sent to people on my road about please make your complaint, nothing like that. 
What I was told was, this is a vocal complaint. You have to send in a written, and why should I send it in unless this is going to continue? So then I sent in the, a written complaint. So, you know, I had, why I didn't come to you? Because what I read in your Instagram account and the, the, the ways in which you were attacking people who were, and the way if your supporters were attacking people who, who were complaining. But no, that's not me. I and all I said but, was. But what you were saying was that it's, it, it, this is, this is, uh, this is. Okay, this is, this is why this is why this is not a public hearing. We, we are not adjudicating neighbors. I was trying to be quiet about it, but I'm just saying I never got uh, uh, anything from Howie. I, I made a vocal complaint and then I made a written complaint. Okay, as, as you should have. Thank you. Well, Howie, are you in a position to uh, notify anybody who made a complaint on Miller Road to contact Mr. Bernstein and work with his uh, themselves? Can you be an interlocutor? I mean, an interloper. You're getting you complaints from people in Miller Road, correct? Well, uh, I'm sure the people from Miller Road will, will now complain. Did Perfect. you get complaints from people on Miller Road? Did I get complaints? Your office, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And those are people who did not personally reach out? Yes. To Mr. Bernstein? Nobody personally reached out. Okay. Is there some way to get those people with Mr. Bernstein so they could reach them in the agreement? That's the definition of interlocutor. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that would be on volition. We can't, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not supposed to divulge the names or addresses or emails of anybody who makes it. No, I'm saying you're in, in touch with people and suggest that a well, solution with Mr. Bernstein may be a solution. A, a conversation with Mr. Bernstein may be a solution. Yeah. Is it? Well, they've already said that they would be okay with acoustic music, and they would be okay with music inside. Okay. With the loud music outside. So he knows what their complaints are. Nobody's trying to run them out of town. Or it seems like it, like, it, like it really is. You know, they say, well, it's okay if he plays music inside, but his license says that he could play music. So. What is music? I don't think his license says circles. he can play music. It says live music. My, my liquor license says it. Yeah, as liquor well, license as well as my insurance. Liquor is. license and the insurance have nothing to do with it. And the zoning code says that it's, 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 it's integral to my business. This is an agency having jurisdiction situation. And in this town, I'm the code enforcement officer. And I'm the agency having authority. So. But I was it doesn't very, matter what the liquor is. I was, I was, I was very given this authority by your predecessor. Okay? When I bought my business, when I opened my business, this was a dumb He said you could play live music outside? We weren't talking about outside. Well, and I just, what, what I said, mean. Howie, is I'm coming today to understand the code of what I'm allowed to do in my restaurant. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to work with neighbors on a volume for my one day a week outside. <clears> I would rather be doing it. This is, this, we're in a global pandemic. And what we've had to do to keep our businesses running as restaurants is a lot. I don't think I understand. That. I understand. I think that all of your neighbors were, were aware of that. They weren't going to come after you because of the COVID. But they didn't come talk to me either. They didn't come say, hey, the music's loud. I would have said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I will work on turning it down. Nobody did that. Okay, so now you will do that. The people that did that wrote letters, and I worked with them. Also, I would say to the neighbors, this, this is a COVID period. We are in an unprecedented situation yeah. here that we all have to work together with, and we're all threatened by. Absolutely. We're all trying to supersede and overcome, and we all have to work together. It's, it's a small community. And you'll see it in that letter. And okay. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You are Miss who? Huh? Who? What's your name? Who is Andrew. Okay. I don't think we have them. We don't have. We don't have a letter. I have them if you want them. The letters that you gave us. No, I have the complaints oh. from when I did the FOIA. Yeah. yeah. But again, we're 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 circling I back we're to. Going back to this is the whole. Circles. The the code says he's allowed to have music. It doesn't say it has to be inside. There's no mention of indoor versus outdoor. It merely defines him as a nightclub based on the number of musicians. We all agree he is a nightclub according to our code. 
and we all agreed our code says that he is allowed to operate a night code, a nightclub where he's doing it, which brings it back to it. There may or may not be future noise violations, which we also agreed the zoning board of appeals doesn't enforce noise complaints. Um, I, I totally agree with your advice, which Jeremy has been amenable to, and the neighbors are as well, that they are gonna work together to make sure they aren't annoying each other anymore. Um, I think we should move on. I think it's a very succinct uh, summary. Yep. The, the, so the zoning department, or the zoning officer. How with the building department, the code yeah, enforcement. Building yeah. department, the CEO, the code enforcement officer. Has it issued a complaint to I, I, that is my understanding. That's what I. That's what I get at. I just want to be. Yeah, clear. no. I, that's my understanding as well. That there is currently no, no official violation. No one's about to storm the doors of the pines with the SWAT no team. No appearance to do. Okay, so so. What did you actually? Didn't you get a cease and desist order? What, I what got a, I got a violation letter. So it's everyone. All right. Everyone, everyone a violation. This is yeah. a violation letter. It's more of a notice of complaints, I think, is, is how we should interpret that letter. At the time of this letter, I will repeat that I have never, have never had one complaint about that to the police. And I had previously worked with the other neighbors in which I said I spoke with. And then the, the other neighbors that did complain after I did the FOIA act, uh, they, those are the neighbors that hadn't come and spoken to me. And if they did, I would have worked with them. Okay. Well, it only says imprisonment not exceeding a year. Maybe you could use a year off. I <laughs> could, actually. It, 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 uh, Jeremy, is, yeah. is Howie's email to you explaining that that should not be viewed as a threat? Is that adequate to you? Do we need a, a further formal document? I would assume an email from the Office of uh, Code Enforcement would be adequate to allay your fears that you're not going to jail nor going to be fined $250. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. But it said in the email as well that, you know, I couldn't do outdoor music. If I did, I'd be in violation of the I'm finding out I'm not. So I believe you're not. So thank you very much. So, so we're back to where we were again when I was wondering, is there a next step for us on this subject or have we closed the circle? Closed the circle. I think it's up to you and your neighbors to close the circle. Well, I, I'm happy to talk to them about the outdoor music and close that circle. I just want to make sure the circle, that the bigger circle that we're talking about, which you already stated to me, yes, we are able to do the music there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's fine. And yes, I will work on outdoor sound level with my neighbors. Okay. There's any future action to be taken on the neighbors that's between them and you? Yes. Yep. Are we yep. all in agreement here? I think as, as Elizabeth, Elizabeth said, that they closed the circle twice. <laughs> so, so this is, not, right this is not a ruling of variance or anything like that. This is just us giving you advice. I, there's no need for a variance. Right. It's, it's yeah. the yeah. advice. So I will not apply for a variance. I don't need one. That's my determination. Just continue to try to keep your neighbors happy. Yes. Okay. Do you have anything else to say? Nope. Okay. Rob, do you have anything else to say? Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you for your participation, folks. Any other business in front of us? Okay. Thank you for thrashing that out. Again, please understand, as you pointed out, the Scotia written in 1974, our socioeconomic situations far superseded that was in this code. This is just one of many holes in the code in terms of how we interpret our, our life going forward. The short-term rental committee whole issue is one of those examples. I, so, I, I totally understand. Okay, thank you. Just on that note, uh, changing the code, uh, I had discussions with our board members about considering, again, this is before I leave in December, that we would convene what's called a zoning revision committee, which entails members of the planning board, members of the CBA, members of the town board, and community members, in order to review specific sections of the code that we feel. Because there's stuff the planning board deals with and how we deal with that, again, are, are very antiquated. Yes. They, they don't fit any box anymore. And we have other boxes that have popped up in the meantime, but we can't check off because they're in the box. Right. So it makes it difficult and technically 
they told them it's not real, you know, it's not fair, or it's illegal, or something. But right. There's all these different things, and you got to clarify that. Um, even the fact to rectify, we had a debate many years ago with other members of the planning board, somebody had a violation, and in order to resolve the violation, it required them to apply for a permit. There's some kind of clause in there that says you're not allowed to apply for a permit while you currently have a violation. <laughs> but the, the application was to resolve the violation. <laughs> so it, it basically stalled for like a month or two, and then they just said, we'll, we'll listen to it, and moved on. So, okay. But it got it resolved, and everybody was happy. So, okay. We are going to convene this only revision committee over the next few months. We're going to ask that. that but, so that's coming up. Okay, so very good. Very good. Put this on your list, I'm saying. Now, if you know the spots, oh. ask to have that looked at already. But we got some spots. <laughs> so no, he's, spot. he's saying if we can help them identify the anomalies oh, in the code, yeah, they, they can address it. Yeah. yeah, well, December's right on the corner. I hope you guys hurry up on that. That's going to be a big job. <laughs> like four months, right? Yeah, only four months. Government. Oh, well. Just remember, you can't make everybody happy. An impossibility. You can only do the best you can to keep the majority happy. And, and we have to look at, as I say, community, character, economic viability, and safety issues. Yes. Um, and every time you make a decision, you make one person happy and one person unhappy. I told these guys that joined, like, probably one, half the decisions we made, half the people in town are going to hate us, and half the people in town are going to love us. So hopefully this isn't one of the situations. We didn't make a decision. We didn't, no. make, a decision. No. We didn't make a decision. No. Alan's right. Okay. Um, any further business from anybody? May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Second. First motion. Motion to close. Motion to close. Second from Gary. All in favor? Aye. Uh, meeting so closed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. Mark, are you around tomorrow to sign the county report the referral? Yeah, I can. Or this week. Yeah, I can do it. One of my few days off. Thank you. I'm kidding. No, no, no. I don't know. Yeah, today was just a great time. Right. And I finally sat down, took a deep breath, and said, oh my god, it's 7 o'clock. How did the grand board go? You? All good? I was, uh, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was going to say, I was going to say, I